On today's episode, Finland opens the first European nuclear plant in 15 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. Something just happened in Europe, something that hasn't happened in 15 years. A new nuclear power plant has just been commissioned. The new reactor, Unit 3 of the Okiluoto Nuclear Power Complex in Finland, was grid-connected on 12th March, and it started supplying current to the national grid. Initial power output is 103 megawatts electrical, and the power plant operator, TVO, expects the 1600 megawatt electrical unit to operate at full capacity in July. First criticality was attained on 21 December, and during the test phase, TVO generated between 3 and 4 terawatt hours of power, representing about 10% of Finland's demand. By summer, the OL3 unit is expected to produce about 14% of the nation's entire electrical power needs. The Okiluoto 3 project is complex and it's controversial. The original reactor design by Framatome and EDF of France and Siemens of Germany is called EPR, and it's a third-generation pressurized water design, and construction in Finland began in August 2005, with the project managed by Arriva and Siemens. Now, Siemens left the nuclear industry in 2011, and construction delays were common as early as a year into the project due to quality problems with subcontractors. Now, part of the delays were traced to the nature of the plant, with a reactor larger than previous designs, and using new welding techniques in the reactor pressure vessel, and very large critical pressurizer forgings that required several attempts to produce approved parts. Cost overruns were considerable, rising from the original estimate of 3 billion euros to a final cost of 11 billion euros, split between TVO and Arriva. So what did TVO get for their money? A third-generation pressurized water reactor with a compact core, and due to the light water moderator, a negative temperature coefficient of reactivity, increasing safety and making the reactor easier to control. Now, from an engineering perspective, a major difference in PWRs compared to other reactor designs are much higher system pressure in the primary coolant loop, typically 150 atmospheres, some 2,000 psi. Steam for the turbine hull is supplied by a secondary loop. The finished plant has two other notable features. The site is the location for the Onkalo Deep Geological Repository for Spent Nuclear Fuel, the first in the world, and waste heat, which is typically rejected to ambient in all types of thermal power plant, is used for a small-scale agricultural experiment before cooling water is pumped back to the sea. The experiment currently grows wine grapes as well as whitefish and sturgeon for caviar. With an increased emphasis on both clean energy and on reduction of reliance on Russian fossil fuel supplies in Europe, nuclear power is back on the table, especially in France, which has a long history of generation with fission. But with the high costs associated with large-scale reactor designs, can large-scale projects be brought online fast enough to matter, even if they are affordable? Small modular reactors and fourth-generation designs may be the answer, but as the cost of renewables such as photovoltaics fall, the competition will be fierce. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.